This is part two of lesson 5.5b. We started off this, sec this uh, second example of the video. There's three examples in the lesson, but we did two of the examples since we had done a previous one in the previous lesson. Um, so we, had, we were looking at the case of a three-sided enclosure this time, and we're going to try to see if this is actually the case here, the maximum um, uh, area or the maximum area for, for a given perimeter will happen when you have a length that's equal to twice the width. So we'll do this example to see if that's true. So you're given 120 feet of fencing to create a garden in your backyard. Um, and this time you decide to put the garden against a wall. So you only need to fence in three sides. What is the largest possible garden that you can enclose? So again, we're asking you for a maximum. Um, so that said, you need some kind of quadratic equation to find a, a vertex. Well, let's start off, start off the situation with a sketch. So here we'll have our, um, our house. This is our house here. We're making the garden against the house or the building. We'll have the garden in um, red. But it's only going to have three sides. We don't need any, any fencing for this back side here because um, our garden um, is against the house there. So we have our, our width over here. We have our length over here and our length over here. And so this is our first step doing a sketch. Our second step is going to be to create some equations. So what we know is, um, we know the perimeter. To calculate the perimeter of this, uh, this garden this time for the fence, uh, we're going to do uh, L plus L, so 2L. But instead of W plus W, we're just going to do plus W this time because you don't need fencing for the, the, back, the back where the house is there. And that's going to be equal to our perimeter, which in this case is... Um, 120 feet. So this would be equation number one. We can make a second equation. We want to know the maximum area for that given perimeter. So um, let's just write down perimeter is 120. Our second equation could be area is equal to length times width, which is how you would calculate the area of something like this, this type of shape here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to isolate for one of the variables. We want to create a quadratic equation, but there's too many variables right now. There's L's and W's everywhere. We just want one variable like X squared, for example, or W squared, or L squared, or whatever. So we're going to isolate the one that's the easiest to isolate in this situation. You could do any one. You could do L, you could do W. Um, we're going to isolate Um, I'm going to choose to do W, but you can try L and see if you get the right answer, the same answer. Isolate W in 1. And so what we're doing to isolate W is we're going to have 2L minus 2L, because we're sending 2L to the other side, plus W is equal to 120 minus 2L, since whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. This is zero here, so we're going to have W is equal to 120 minus 2L. And now what we can do is we can go sub this into equation 2. Let's call this equation 3. So our fourth step is sub 3 into 2, and so we get A is equal to, um, so this is W here, so um, L times 120 minus 2L, and if you expand this you'd see that your A value is negative, so we know we have another situation, we have a parabola going up, and we're basically looking for this maximum value here. So which length would give us the maximum value? Um, and so we'll see what that means in just a bit. But um, here we have our quadratic relationship given to us. It's in the factored form. So um, what we need to do is we need to find our, our zeros. And the reason we want to find our zeros is because we want to find our vertex. Remember, we don't have the vertex form right now. 
but you can find where the vertex is because the vertex is basically where the axis of symmetry is. So if you find the middle where the zeros are, the middle of the zeros, that's where your axis of symmetry is and that's where your vertex is as well. So we'll find the zeros, it's our step five. Um, zeros happen when L is equal to zero. If L is equal to zero, the whole equation is equal to zero because you're doing zero times 12, for example. And then we need to find the other zero over here. So we have 12 minus 2L is equal to zero. So what does L have to be to make this equal to zero? Well, we can tell it's six, but let's just carry that out. 12 is equal to 2L. Divide by two, divide by two. Therefore, L is equal to six. So we have zeros at zero, zero. And that's six, zero. And so now what we need to do is we need to find our axis of symmetry, which is our x value for our vertex, and find that maximum area. So um, let's do, to find our axis of symmetry, we need to add our zeros together. So we have um, six plus zero. And since it's in between, we divide by two. And that's going to be six divided by two, which is three. So this is the length that gives us the maximum area. It's three, so a length of three feet will give us the maximum area. So let's go find the, that maximum area, what that is. So what we're going to do is we're going to sub x is equal to three into, um, and this is rather, I should say L, because in this case, x is represented by L. L is equal to three into um, the area equation, which was uh, equation number um, four here, equation number four. Or rather, I, yeah, so this is our fourth equation created when I substitute them in, so I'll put them in equation number four. Um, it wouldn't make sense to put it into the original equation because we don't know what W is right now. Um, so L is equal to three. Um, into equation four. So we're going to have area is equal to three times 12 minus two times three, which is going to be three times 12 minus six, which is going to be three times six. which is going to be 18. So our vertex is 3, 18. So vertex is 3, 18. Therefore, the maximum surface area I just want to make sure I didn't make a mistake here. Ah, I did make a mistake. There you go. I put 12 there by accident. I thought it was kind of small for a maximum surface area of 18. Um, I forgot to put 120 in there as opposed to 12. Um, so 120 minus 2L is equal to 0. Uh, I, know, I know some of you were probably saying, pause the video, stop, go back, Mr. I, you're missing it. Um, sorry about that. So that would make our our, um, our L be uh, 60 instead of 6. So 60 is whenever zeros. 60 there. 30 there. There, that makes more sense. Um, so sub L is equal to 30 into that, which is 120 over here. And let's just make sure I did that. Perfect. Okay. And now that's going to be 120 minus 60 is 3 times 60, or 120 minus 60, um, oh wait, times 30 here as well, so L is equal to 30, don't forget that. So we have 30 times 60, which is 1,800 square feet. So it's so easy to make little mistakes like that. 
Um, and again, if you pay attention to your answer in the end, um, you'll notice that you're a little bit off um, if it doesn't make sense. So I thought 18 square feet is pretty small for a garden. So I went back to verify my work and I did that and I saw that I made a mistake. I put 12 in there by accident. Um, so if you were confused for a bit, good. Um, but you knew I made a mistake and hopefully you knew I'd catch it. Um, so therefore the maximum surface area surface area is 1800 square feet and that happens when you have a length of 30 a length of 30 not 3 feet so 30 feet not 3 feet let's go see if that was right though so we said that this is 30 here and this is 30 here let's go see what our width is just out of curiosity so um, if we if we put our length of 30 into this equation so I'm just doing an aside here this is just kind of a separate part of the problem um, I'm gonna put my 30 length into that plus my W and that's equal to 120 and I'm gonna find what my width is so 60 plus W is equal to 120 so W is equal to 120 minus 60 which is equal to 60 feet so the width is 60 feet does that work with what we said above in that rule let's take a look so we said that the length is equal to twice the width a length equal to twice the width gives you the largest possible area for the given perimeter so it works out we just labeled width and length um, this way here but we still have um, one twice the other so one twice the other um, gives us the largest surface area which works out in the end so it does work uh, so this was our video for example three maximizing surface area when you have a third sided enclosure I'm gonna make one more video for this part here um, I want to do one of the problems from your textbook uh, just to make sure you can see a variety of problems being modeled. Um, so you need to make sure that you practice a, lot, a variety of problems because they won't all be the same. You need to make sketches and understand how to frame them and what they're asking for. But it's always kind of the same um, strategy. Just make linear equations, multiply them together to get quadratic, and then find that vertex somehow because we're asking you for a maximum or a minimum. And that's the, the general idea behind it. Be able to interpret what's happening because if you make mistakes like I did, um, where I get you know three as being middle and then 18 square feet for a garden, um, you're able to interpret if you made a mistake or not. So understanding your numbers is, is really important, right? If you do if you use math in your everyday life and you don't get what the numbers mean, well, you're not going to do your job very well. You're not going to do whatever you need to do very well. So if you're reading a recipe incorrectly and you, you know, for example, read. Um, misread that you need I don't know let's say three kilograms of salt and you read the unit incorrectly and you don't question three kilograms of salt for you know for for this dish here your dish is not going to taste very good so pay attention to that be able to interpret what's happening in the next video we're going to do question um, a question from your textbook I'm going to write it out now so you can go find that textbook um, while you open the next video um, so we're going to do page uh, 302 we're going to do number 16 together.